Hello friends and welcome back to my channel, Time with Lauren. I am so happy to have you here. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's really helping me to grow my channel and extend my reach. If you have any questions about the video or recipe shared here, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to chat with you. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and share and give it a like. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today's breakfast is waffles and bacon, and I just put my bacon in the oven and we cook it, we like ours crispy. So waffles is a breakfast that they just eat as they go or eat as they come out because it takes me so long to make waffles. And whenever I do make them, I always make like a double or triple batch because we will freeze the extras. So I will lay out the waffles there to cool and then I will put them into freezer bags and then we'll just reheat them in the oven under the broiler for about a minute or two and crisp them up. And so it's just like having frozen waffles, but homemade. So I actually do not enjoy making waffles, but it is probably one of the top three requested uh, meals for my family. They really enjoy it. So that is why I try to make a double batch when I make them because then we can cook them once, but then eat them a couple times before I have to cook them again. It just takes a long time. I don't get to sit down and eat because I can only cook four at a time. And with a big family, four waffles at a time is like enough for one big boy. So anyways, we had that and our raw milk. So that was breakfast on this day. Okay, and so I was just gonna tell you, I really do like this waffle maker. It's very simple. And the time here is in minutes, I believe. So about how long do you want your waffles to cook? And it just depends. All waffle recipes will be different. Sometimes I do sourdough waffles. Sometimes I do fresh milled. And then these are actually um, like an oat-based waffle. So we had some about a cup and a half of cooked oatmeal the other day left over. So I just put it in a container. And then I added that with a little bit of sourdough starter and fresh milled flour. And so these are more of a dense, chewy waffle. So they take a little longer to cook. Um, but I do enjoy this waffle maker. I like it because it makes four huge waffles at a time. So you can see they're as big, bigger than my hand here. So it makes really big waffles for like a young toddler. This might be enough. Um, you know, one of these would be enough. But for my bigger boys, they usually eat two or three. And you can pull these plates off. I'm not gonna touch it because it's hot, but you just take these off so they can be washed, hand washed. Okie dokie, breakfast this morning is fried eggs and raw milk and banana muffins that I made the other day. They already got started on the banana muffins because they were so hungry they couldn't wait. So are you guys ready for your fried eggs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming right up. But All not right. Me. No, you don't want a fried egg? No. Okay. So I just made these last night just so that they would be ready this morning. These are just 100% fresh milled banana muffins. And usually all, pretty much all of our muffins are fresh milled now. And we make banana muffins on the regular. So this is our breakfast on this day. Okay, so breakfast on this day. This is actually just my breakfast. The kids are already sitting down eating. Today is just a leftover breakfast. We had a few waffles. One child wanted a yogurt bowl. So we did that with some hemp seeds and jam and fruit. And then I'm just having some leftover bacon, some fried eggs, and then some leftover sourdough, cinnamon raisin, English. So we have leftover waffles and raw milk, leftover waffles and raw milk, but well, he already ate most of his waffles. And a yogurt bowl. That was breakfast on this day. In case you're wondering what the little one had this morning, he's having a of waffle. And then I am going to cook one of my egg yolks a little on the firmer side, and I'll just peel the white off and give him the yolk. Good morning, friends. Okay, so today we're gonna make cream of wheat and I'm gonna show you how we do that homemade with our fresh milled wheat from our grain mill. It is so delicious and so nourishing because fresh ground wheat berries con contain, the wheat germ contains the highest food source of vitamin E. So we're gonna get started milling that and I'll show you how I make it. Okay. 
All right, so for fresh milled cream of wheat, we like ours pretty thick, like very thick porridge. So I'm gonna do a three to one ratio of water to wheat berries. And for ours, we like to use the same thing that uh, the combination that I bake like bread loaves with. They're soft white wheat berries. This is your all purpose flour. And then there is hard white berries and hard red. And that's what this is. And it is a higher protein, higher gluten, but we're, that doesn't matter for cream of wheat. We just prefer the taste and texture of this. And then also it does have a little more protein. All right, and to do this, you're not gonna grind it super fine like you would um, for bread because you ha um, you don't want this to be like bread dough. You want it to cook in like a more of a kernel. Um, so I'm just gonna do it on like a 10 to an 11. That's what we prefer. <laughs> have our cream of wheat here. You can see here it's coarse. This is not like, um, you know, flour. You can see more coarse kernels. All right, so we have our one and a half cups. This is what I make for us, and it's usually the right amount. It's been trial and error to figure it out. Um, so we're just going to get some water now. All right, and then in an effort to save on dishes, I don't get like a different measuring cup, so I'll just put my one and a half of round cream of wheat in there, and then I will just go fill up my pot over there. I have four and a half cups of water and then a little extra just in case we need it, and we're just gonna get that going to a boil. I need something to whisk, whisk, um, whisk it when you pour it in because you pour it in once it's boiling, and then you're gonna wanna, um, whisk really hard so you don't get too many big lumps, but actually as a child, I really loved the lumps. So I told my mom, give me all the lumps. <laughs> all right, and then while I'm waiting for that to come to a boil, I just grab out our spoons and I just get everybody's bowls ready. And then I just scoop butter so that everybody gets some on top of their bowl. Okay, and with our oatmeal, we actually don't put as much sugar, but cream of wheat, um, like this size of oatmeal, I would probably put like a quarter cup of sugar for all of us. And But cream of wheat, we do prefer a little bit sweeter, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some sugar and just get it over here. This is a half cup scoop, and I'm using maybe like a third. Okay, so as you can see here, the water is boiling. So I am going to stir in my cream of wheat and whisk as I do so. And then you want to turn the heat down. Um, you want it to still stay simmering, but if you don't turn it down, then it will boil over. So you can see if you were to use, um, a lot of people use soft white wheat for cream of wheat. You can use whatever you want, but we just prefer the flavor and texture of this one. But my family is also very much used to a dark whole grain bread. So if you're just getting started on milling grains, then you might want to use a hard white or even a soft white. So I'm just going to kind of vigorously whisk this, make sure everything is cooking separate. It's still boiling or simmering. And so this is gonna take about six or seven minutes to thicken up and I will show you what it looks like. We like to serve this with a big glass of raw milk. So this is not the highest of protein breakfast, but it is very filling. It gets you those really good vitamins and whole grains that you can't get from other places in its most natural, raw, fresh, bioavailable form. So anyways, you can see that this is kind of simmering, boiling here. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit more because this will cook over and it will make a big mess. So don't walk away from it. You wanna just kinda let it cook. Um, 
and watch it. You just want to let it cook gently until it's nice and thick. So you can see now it's much thicker. It's not all the way, we like ours thicker and it's gonna um, thicken as it sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the sugar and mix that in. Sugar acts like a liquid, so it's going to get a little thinner. And just stir that in. And then it's just about thick enough for us, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat it to the back burner and now I'm just uh, I'm just letting it cool because it's like molten lava it's very hot um, and I'm just gonna add some frozen blueberries to the littler ones because they like those and then one of my older kids likes it too uh, my other kids sometimes we put raisins in it and so, most of the time we just eat it with raisins or plain oatmeal we tend to put a lot of things in but cream of wheat we just like plain or raisin so just gonna add some frozen blueberries these help to cool it down as well All right, so it's cooled down, and I'll show you how thick it is. It's pretty thick, and it's going to continue to set up as it thickens. So we're going to go ahead and get this in the bowls. All right, so this is our homemade fresh milled cream of wheat for breakfast today. All right, y'all come and eat. All right, so this morning we're just making biscuits. Um, this is about three-fourths fresh milled flour. You can't really tell because of the lighting, and about one-quarter um, just regular all-purpose flour. I do not measure my biscuit recipe. I just scoop out however much I'm thinking I'm gonna make. So this morning I'm not making very many just for the kids and myself and I probably won't even eat any. All you need is just flour, baking powder, a pinch of salt if you want, and then um, buttermilk. Then there's an egg in here because when I use fresh milled grains, I notice that the egg really helps to bind the biscuits together. So we're gonna get started mixing these. All right, up. and so you can see the butter, this cuts it in nicely. I just kinda do that and kinda chop it in. Sometimes I use my hands, but I'm not making very many this morning. So I just do this and just get it. You can see it's a wetter dough because if you make it too dry, you will have crumbly biscuits. So I'm just going to press these out onto this parchment and I'm not gonna cut my biscuits in circles this morning. I'm just gonna um, plop them, this whole parchment sheet into this pan. So I'm just gonna put them onto this parchment sheet real quick and give them a few folds. That way they're flaky and then we'll get them in the oven. So sometimes I cut my biscuits into circles, but I don't feel like it this morning. So I just have a bowl scraper to get out um, all the stuff from the sides. And then I'm just gonna give it a sprinkle on top. All right, a sprinkle on top, give it a pat. And you wanna, if you want super fluffy biscuits and you just pat it like that, but if you want flaky biscuits, then you're wanna gonna give it some really gentle, you don't push down hard, but you're just gonna give it some folds and that's gonna give you really flaky biscuits and layers you can see here. So that's really it. It is a little bit sticky, but if you don't want hard crumbly biscuits and you're gonna wanna be real gentle with it, do those folds and just kind of press it out. And so I think I did four folds. Hold on, I'll get them. And then I just kind of press them out into a shape here. This morning we're just keeping it simple. so. See, I'll just use my, so I'm just using my bench scraper here and cutting these into little biscuits. And you can use a knife as well. And if you want your biscuits to be crunchy all the way around, then you're gonna wanna separate them. But we like ours soft, so we leave ours touching. So there you have it. That took me what about, besides doing it on the video, 
if I weren't videoing and recording, it would have taken me far less time. So there you have it, homemade biscuits, freshly milled. So I'm just going to slide them into here, just because I already had them on parchment. And if you need to um, season your cast iron skillet, this is a great time to do it. You're gonna put some lard oil, my favorite is lard or tallow, on your pan. And then you're just gonna set the biscuits or whatever you're cooking inside because this is gonna cook at a higher temp. These are gonna go at 450. Um, just until they're done, probably like eight or 10 minutes. They're small, so it won't take them long. All right, we're gonna get these in the oven. All right, so here are our biscuits and you can see the flaky layers because of how I showed you. You can see all those beautiful layers and they are gonna be super tender and delicious. Ooh, they're hot still. So these baked for about eight minutes on 450 and they're perfect. You can brush them with butter if you want. And then I just have plated up some fried eggs and I'm still cooking some more. So that is breakfast on this morning. Oh, and we have homemade peach jam. And then this is the one jam I've never made homemade just because we never get fresh raspberries, but raspberries my favorite. So I buy this occasionally for myself as a treat.